Uh, good morning, Mr. Leak here. Uh, we're going to do a lesson video on coasts today. Uh, we're going to look specifically at the different types of waves, their characteristics, uh, the differences between them. But we're also going to look at how waves are actually formed. So you're going to have some sort of understanding of how a wave is formed. And then we're going to look at, like I say, the differences between the two specific types of waves, how they form, what are the characteristics, how can we tell them apart. Right, first thing I want you to do, because hopefully you've got a pen and piece of paper next to you or around you, if you haven't, I want you to grab some. We are going to do a lot of little tasks, little questions, so that you can make sure that you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So the first thing I want you to do is look at the two images on the board. They're both obviously different types of waves. The first thing is suggest what causes waves to form. So think about what might happen to make a wave form. Then after that, I want you to explain what makes waves different. So obviously you can see that the two images are completely different. What makes them different? Why might they be different? And how would that then potentially impact what is being caused? So that's what I want you to do. So I want you to pause the video here, take about four or five minutes, answer those questions, and then we'll go through the answers when you have done it. Right, so in terms of the first one, waves are formed by the wind blowing over the sea. Now the friction of the wind on the wave or on the water itself causes ripples. This then develops into waves that we know. There are other factors that can cause waves. Um, things like tsunamis uh, are caused by powerful earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. And like it says there, it leads to a tsunami, which is basically a large displacement of water, uh, which obviously causes a lot of impacts that we'll look at in a future video. Uh, the distance the wind blows across the water is called the fetch. Now, that's important that we get ahead around that word particularly. Uh, the longer the fetch, the more powerful the wave. So the longer the distance that the wind has blown across the top of the water is called the fetch. The longer the fetch, the more powerful the wave. So the wave will have a lot more energy if the wind has blown a lot further of a distance. Right, so the distance, like we've just said, cross... Um, the wind or the wind blowing across the water sorry it's called the fetch the longer the the fetch the more powerful the wave itself so in terms of this image right here i want you to study the map uh, of the uk and the wider world which areas of the uk coastline is most likely to experience the more powerful waves why would that be the case so I want you to use your compass points that you should know. Um, for instance, you can start your sentence, the southwest of the UK will experience the most powerful waves because think of the potential reasons why that might be the case. Looking at this phrase at the top, so the, the fetch of the wave itself, so the distance the wind has blown across the top of the water. I'll keep repeating it because I want us to understand what the fetch is. So the longer the fetch, the more powerful the wave. So which areas of the UK will have the more powerful waves thinking of like i said that word fetch right there again pause the video two or three minutes just have a little think answer that question and then we'll get the answer in a few minutes time right so in terms of it uh the good answer or an answer that i would give would the southwest U, uh, coast of the uk will experience the most powerful waves because the fetch travels over a large distance from north america across the atlantic ocean whereas the southeast of the uk will experience the least powerful waves because the fetch travels a shorter distance hopefully we're starting to get something like that on our piece of paper so if we go back to the question itself you can see that the southwest area of the uk has a large body of water the atlantic ocean so potentially the fetch could be all the way from north america all the way to the uk so those waves have a potential to be the more powerful because the fetch can be longer whereas the eastern side of the uk the southeast specifically the fetch is a lot less because the distance the water can travel over the english channel is very small Right, there's two different types of waves. We need to look at them specifically and the two characteristics of those two waves. So how are they different and how their impact can then be different. So I want you to make notes as we go along. Um, I will get you to do certain things at certain points, like I said. So the first type we're gonna look at is destructive waves. Um, so these waves basically, as the title says, are destructive, so they destroy the beach. The reason for that is the swash is um, the movement 
towards the beach. Destructive waves have a weak swash, so that means that not a lot of sand, pebbles, rocks, etc. are pushed up the coast. So the less energy that has, the less likely things are to be pushed up the coast. What they do have is a strong backwash, so that means it's pulling material back into the sea. So because they've got a strong backwash, they can pull material from the beach into the sea. However, they haven't got a very strong swash, so therefore the material cannot then be pushed back on to the land itself. So again, we we'll pull the material in, we haven't got the energy to push it back, back up the beach, therefore the beach is being destroyed. Uh, it's usually got a high wave height formed by long fetch and powerful storms because we said the fetch is bigger for those types of waves. Um, therefore they've got a high wave height and the length the distance between the two waves here is short so you get a lot of waves quite quickly quite high quite destructive in that they pull material from the beach into the sea but they haven't got the energy to push it back up uh, the only other type of wave that we're going to talk about is the constructive wave pretty much they're the opposite in every possible way so the low wave height so they look quite calm obviously the wind and the fetch isn't as big on these type of waves so they look quite calm conditions the wavelength is long therefore the time between waves is a lot longer so they're less less quick they're less strong etc what these have is a strong swash so the break up the beach is quite strong so that means that they can push sand and rocks and sediment up the beach but they have a weak backwash so pulling it back into the sea is not as strong so what that means or the impact of that is material is forced up the beach the energy is then lost, so it can't be then pulled back into the sea. Therefore, we gain land on the beach, or we gain material on the beach. Hence why it's called a constructive wave. Right, what I want you to do um, is sketch the two types of waves into your book or on a piece of paper or whatever. Um, write a paragraph comparing the two, saying how and why they are different. I'm going to leave this image on the board, or you can pause it right there. This is an easy way of doing it. Um, getting the diagrams drawn into your book and then comparing the two. Um, once you've done that, I want you to answer the challenge question, which is which types of waves are more likely going to be found along the southeast coast of the UK and why? So think about what we talked about way back uh, when we did the fetch. So which areas of the UK are going to have more powerful waves? So which type of waves are going to be found or more likely to be found along the southeastern coast where there is less uh, area of water to gain that increase in fetch. Pause the video here, have a go at both those things. Right, so uh, hopefully you've drawn these two in. If we go back to the challenge question, which types of waves are more likely to going to be found along the southeast coast of the UK and why? Well, it's going to be the constructive waves more likely. Why is that the case? Well, if we go way back to the diagram here because this uh, the fetch of these waves is a lot shorter that means that these have less energy so they're more likely to be constructive waves like it says here the smaller the fetch calmer weather conditions so the southeast coast has a lot less of a distance between it and somewhere else so the fetch is lower therefore the energy picked up by the wave is lower the impact of that would be that they're constructive waves causing strong swash, so sediment is pushed up the beach, and a weak backwash, meaning that sediment doesn't have, or the wave doesn't have the energy to pull the sediment back into the sea itself. Hopefully we've got all that. If you do need to go back over it, just start the video again, uh, watch it all through. Uh, if you do need to add anything or you've got any questions or whatever, leave me a comment below and hopefully I'll get back to you when you've watched this video.